love the North East. I've always lived here, um, always worked locally. It's got a fantastic heritage, beautiful areas right across County Durham, especially the coastline, and the Deans, Hawthorne Dean and Castle Eden Dean, which I know very well. It's really, really good to work in this area because we have a unique coastline. You can only find this type of coastline between South Shields and Hartlepool. Um, it is really unique, it's heavily protected. Um, the people are really good, they're very approachable. Um, it's just a really nice place to live. A mixed bag <laughs> of people in the area. Um, majority really nice, lovely, friendly people. Um, I think in terms of who's living in the area, there's a high rate of unemployment and there are parts that are quite poverty stricken to be honest. Um, but the communities are amazing, like everybody helps each other out, it's really friendly. Um, and yeah, I like living here. It used to be lots of not lots of things going on at once in in the main street is Millbank Road. And like there used to be like fights and stuff like that, but it's nothing like that now, so it's all changed. What's well, better for the children, really? Because it's not—it's not something you'd want your kids to see, is it? I think we've got a great community. We all come together when people need our help, and it's a place to live in. You're safe. I would think it's probably changed over the generations because, obviously, I would say really here, people relied on the fishing industry yeah. and. The coal industry, yeah. both of which... Yeah, all the heavy industries have obviously yeah. gone, really. The shipbuilding, the steelworks, yeah. all the things our fathers would have gone into apprenticeships for, they no longer exist, so then the next generation probably would go to university and there wouldn't be that much for them to yeah. come back here for. Personally, we have down three or four times a week. Our fish three, four times a week, off the cliffs here, or off the bottom, down here. Um, just part of me psychic, really. I've part been brought up of it all our lives, haven't we? Part of life. Spent half your life down there. You know, bring the kids down there. You know, it's grandkids. In my case, it'd probably be a great grandchild. <laughs> no, that's true. So, you know, it's part of our it's life. It's part, part of our upbringing down there. That's how we're passionate about it. It's a course I know well, and it's it's, it's lovely to see it in, in its in its wealth. You're not forced to do anything. You can just go down, stand on the beach, watch the, watch watch the waves, uh, and you don't have to do anything but look and admire it. I don't know if I could live anywhere that's not close to the coast now if, if you know what I mean come out in the morning it's you've got a gorgeous sunrise coming up over the sea I mean I say it's, it's a bit dark now when I'm out with the dog in the mornings at the moment but you know during during the summer it's either already light or the spring and the autumn when you've got a sunrise coming up it's it's kind of it's a, it's it starts the day off with a bit of tranquility I guess um, a, a kind of just nice peaceful start to the morning. My great father and I used to describe the waves as white horses galloping towards you. The sea and the view can be different over 24 hours. You can have a calm sea, you can have a choppy sea and then you can have a fierce sea where the waves are galloping in aren't they and crashing against the wall and it's it's like amazing to see and you take photographs even though you've seen it 20 yeah. times before. <laughs> You think, oh, I have to capture this moment. Um, it's just exciting because every day is different. I like the buzz when, it's, when it is a storm. I'd probably go down. When my kids, my kids were little, we'd stay in the car and watch the waves crashing over. I do, oh, don't get me wrong, I don't take chances and I wouldn't go. I do like to stand outside the car and watch the waves coming over. It's just that feeling of seeing it and getting a little bit of spray off the sea. We come from, like, um, India. The part of India, there's no sea coast by. So it was the first experience seeing the sea as well.
It was amazing, like I never ever seen sea before. I still remember when I first rang my mother back home and I, all I could talk about the sea. It's one of those things you can enjoy with the family pretty much all year round. Um, summertime on the beach, building sandcastles or plodging along the coast. Oh, plodging. Uh, plodging's kind of, I, I guess, just a, a local term for maybe it's wading, but it would be something that you do as a kid. I probably, I've never gone swimming or plodging in this sea because <laughs> I've been a grown-up <laughs> while well, I've been here, whereas you know, when I was younger I was uh, chucked in the North Sea all the time, I guess. When I, was, uh... I just feel like home. I mean, I, when the colliery was there and the, the um, colliery waste used to go out to sea and the buckets on the, for the waste from the colliery used to go out and my brother and his friends used to climb in them and see how far they could get out before they chickened out. And, and I used to sit and watch them. And I just think, I want to do that. I never did. But like, it just, I don't know when you're on the beach banks and you're watching the sea and then it's clean now, where before it was coal, the, sea, the sand was black, but it's all cleaned up now. And it's just, it's refreshing to just sit there and watch it all go by. I think my favourite spot's Nose's Point. Um, I just, no matter what the weather is along there, the views are just amazing, no matter what day it is, you know. You could be anywhere. I mean, on, I think me and my partner went along there one day in the summer. We had, like, a hot day, and we, we could have been anywhere, really. Uh, you forget that you were at uh, the same in Easington. So I just like the views, really. The views are lovely. You know, you've got the cliff tops, and then you can go, you can look right over, um, you can see right over to Sunland one way and right over to Hartlepool the other And on a clear day, you know, it's just a lovely view of the sea. You can see the ships out at sea, it's just nice. You're watching all the, you know, the, the tide going in and out. And um, like when I have my grandson, before I take him to nursery, I always take him for a drive in the car, just so he can have a little nap. And I sit at the nose's point and see him. And I just sit there 45 minutes and just watch the comings and goings of the tides. Absolutely. I think it's relaxing. Well, I've got to say, Seaton Crew is, is beautiful. Uh, I mean, I remember Seaton Crew when it, it was uh, loads and loads of people there on a day out, which we would have to get the bus down from Horden to, to Seaton Crew. And uh, straight out to the sands, I go fish and chips or whatever else. And, uh, and it's nice now when you see it now, it's uh, they've made a lovely job of it. You go down Seaton Lane and you can either turn left or right, um, more or turn right. And the, it's really wheelchair friendly. Yeah. And a lot of the cafes and restaurants and stuff down there are ground level so you can get in. Just to Seaton we go to because we live in Seaton. So my house is on a walking distance from the beach. So that's where we go. No, we go actually. Whitby in the summer. Whitby and uh, Saltburn. It's just a day out, fish and chips, that's all. Kids like going there. And my son, when he was little, he liked um, you know, the fishing at, at Whitby. He liked it, so we used to take him there. Grimden's quite good, because I've been running a Grimden quite a bit as well. And that's actually running along the beach. It's pretty hard because I can I can't run on sand. <laughs> I, t I took my children up there for just a weekend in the caravan park, and like the beach was lovely. Like walking down Crimson Day, it was brilliant. Like all the rocks and the kids loved it, and like it was relaxing as well. We spent loads of time as kids down in Crimson. I forgot about that. Um, that wasn't always the cleanest and tidiest, but we just loved it because they had the mix of the beach and sort of the grass areas. I remember like pony riding down there as children and taking the football, um, having picnics and things like that. So we did use Crimden Beach quite a lot and I have taken my kids there. Our favourite spot is probably Seam or Hartlepool. We don't really go further than that. Um, lovely sand and um, it's quite clean. My children, like I say, like going to that lifeboat museum. We like going to museums, so we can pop in there. It's half an hour there. There's a nice little cove around the side of the shops um, in Seam. It's really clean. They don't let the dogs go on there. So 
it's a safety thing, but it's also, you just know that it's nice and clean, so you're not just going to be stepping in dog dirt or whatever. The health benefits to actually living on this coastline and using the coastline, it's just been transformed, mm. transformed my life and health. Um, it's not just, you don't just do it and think, this is good for me. It's just fantastic to do anyway, so it makes it easy. You know, when, usually when the doctor says you have to do this, you have to pack in smoking or you have to, you know, stop the drink or whatever, um, it's usually, a, uh, I've got to put up with that, but to actually, oh yeah, we can, we can go walking, you know, that's, and it's amazing the difference, mm. you know, to your health. Mm. And um, I've got no problems now with the doctor and, you know. I think that the mental health, you don't really that's another important. appreciate the benefit. It's just there because if you have an environment like we used to, where we, we work all day, then you come home, you socialise, you go and do your everyday things. You don't realise the effect of being able to sit in a place like this has on your mind because it just totally relaxes it. And if you do have anything worrying you, um, it's easier to talk about in a place like this an open space it's it's a hidden benefit that you don't really realize how much good it is doing you it, it is oh i love being outside just not good exercise fresh air clears your head especially when you, if you've got a busy job and you're constantly surrounded by people and telephones and children and noise then it's lovely to be out on it. And I don't mind the weather, because you just got to dress appropriately. So even if it's cold, you just get wrapped up. But to be outdoors, good exercise, fresh air, lovely views and scenery, nothing better. And totally free. It doesn't cost anything. You're closer to nature, aren't you? And I think that's why we just like being outside in general. Happy, content, refreshed ready for bed when you get home. Everybody's had a really good day. Kids' energy is spent. Um, some of the best memories I have are with my kids on the local beach, just collecting seashells, like talking about the birds, going through the little cliff caves, and yeah, so it makes me feel happy. When our generation's gone, it'll be if everybody just stop in the house or go to gyms. You didn't need a gym. Come down there and walk along this beach for an hour. <laughs> Nobody had to walk the next day. But as I say, it's a different world. Times is changing, you know. Good. But I don't think it's for the best. I really don't. There's plenty of places we've been that's supposed to be national beauty spots. But when we get back here, we always say, well, this is just as, as nice as the places that people advertise and say, come and see this. So come and see this. <laughs> it's lovely. <laughs> it's a shame as well, in my, again, my personal opinion, that if the access to the beach itself was nicer, people would come. Because I think people who come from outside the area and the way they, they pass through the, the allotments and they pass through the little um, roads down from the shops, they are, they'll pass through graffiti litter, dog waste, and so in their mind they're thinking, well, fly tipping. this isn't very, yeah, fly tipping, this isn't a very nice place to come. So I bet quite a few of them turn back before they even get here, which again, the council could do a lot about that. Sometimes it's access and just different little things that able-bodied people wouldn't notice. And it's not so bad for me, they can maybe lift my chair over and I can maybe scramble over, but when you're in these electric wheelchairs, you can't always... You've got to look at the height of the curb know. to see if you can get yourself up, because there's not always ramps. I don't know, because you don't want to make assumptions, but you do see, as a disabled person myself, it's amazing how many other people have blue badges in this town. So... Um, I don't know whether that's kind of as a result of like disabilities earned by working in the heavy industry or, or maybe that it is a result of like deprivation and poor diet and things like that. I have no idea. 
Well, as I say, it's if the courts will put, you know, in and it's safe and things like that, and it's not up and down like you, you know, you'll get more people coming down, more disabled people coming down. You'll get more wheelchair access and things like that. There'll be a lot of people coming down and using it because people want to come down, but they can't get down. Dangerous. It's it's quite difficult to get down there. The access is appalling. Um, over the years, I mean, I used to go down there when I was a teenager, 13, 14, um, and it was great. My mum didn't see us for hours, but the, I suppose just like with how the ground movement happens over time, the this, this stairs down there is, is really dangerous. Um, the paths is completely overgrown. You can't get down there. Not a lot of people actually know that it's down there. It's great down there, though. They've got little caves. I'd love to take my kids down there, but you just can't get down there. It's, it's too dangerous. Well, I, I go so far along the coastal paths, but then there comes a point where really I wouldn't want to go um, on my own up the coastal path because it's quite remote and I would be a little bit worried that vulnerable um, on my own, really. They're very close to the edge of the beach, but it's it's up a height. And if, if I miss my foot and I could end up rolling down, falling onto the beach and, you know, injured, and how would anybody find me there? They're very remote, the coastal paths. No path's good if it's not safe, because it won't get used much. And I think... Looked after. Looked after, and also, like, well advertised, because... Some people don't even know that there's a coastal path up Crimden. Like, they just go to the beach and then go back. And I'm like, well, you could go to the beach, go along the coastal path, have a nice walk, come back and go on. But most, most people I know don't even know about the coastal path. To be honest, if me now, if I seen a leaf on the notice board, I would look at it, but that's just because I've done quite a few things on the coastal path. But say I know, I know some of my friends there wouldn't even look right at it. So I think it needs, like, I don't know, better advertisement. A New England coast path is being created around the entire coast of England. When it is complete, it will be the longest waymarked coastal path in the world, at over 2,700 miles. The new path will provide a great opportunity for people to experience and enjoy all of our wonderful coastal landscapes and to get closer to nature. I think it's a wonderful idea. Brilliant. Absolutely Brilliant. wonderful yeah. idea. It is. it is. I've heard the money had endorsed that. Yeah. Definitely a wonderful idea, that. Mm hmm Definitely. It means you, you know there's a walk there and it can be sort of uninterrupted, you, you know exactly where you're going to be going. The routes will hopefully be marked out fairly clearly for most people to understand. Uh, and it'd be nice, yeah, to think you can walk right round our coastline or join it at any point and sort of enjoy all of those scenic views. My head's buzzing because I'm thinking, ooh, runs, walks up and down them sand dunes, that sounds brilliant, yes. <laughs> and if it's all mapped out for me, I don't really have to do a lot of thinking. <laughs> I think the coastal path will bring benefits in that it, it will open up areas which are currently inaccessible. I think it will create uh, opportunities for tourism in terms of those people who want to walk the coastal path and uh, they'll have the chance to do that and you can imagine little coffee shops being able to prosper from that. Um, beyond that I think there is a political dimension to it which will give us a chance to turn around and you know, we've got 2,700 miles of path and 10 million people we are a you know we are a significant proportion of this country and we're being ignored and i think there is a chance to to challenge some of that thinking uh, so on a political level there's opportunities but then you want amenities as well because you're always when you're there you always want your fish and chips uh, so you want some sort of local amenities nearby um facilities for sort of washing and cleaning as well and bathroom facilities that's accessible for all would be an ideal world. It would be good if people would stick to the England coastal footpath, um, enjoy what they can see from the cliff tops, and not disturb the wildlife. Um, 
we would never ever stop people from gaining access onto the beach, but it would be nice if people could respect what we have here and try and protect it the best way we can. I think there's definitely, you know, there's definitely a role for people to take care of it. I mean, it's, it's, it's responsibility, isn't it? You know, if you want to reap the benefits of something, it's you should you should at the very least take care of it or just you know respect it for what it is i think we probably need to create and i don't know how we do it but i think there's a guardianship responsibility where local people have to recognize that they're guardians of their bit of the path and that's across the country across england uh and i think if you if you say right what sort of path is hartlepool going to be you know what sort when people come to hartlepool and go on the coastal path our section we want it we should we should aim for it to be the best bit of the coastal path and if every community does that and every every community feels it, it's their their responsibility for their bit and i think they will my guess is that the vast majority of people in hartlepool will rally behind that and will do something about it i don't think it will be a hard sell in hartlepool because of the really socially active people been concreted over right but the sewer pipe was further out than that you know how far out does it go that's, well, that's it that's it no that's the end there sorry that's the end there <laughs> <laughs> oh well you got a laugh haven't you <laughs> if it bruises tomorrow i'm suing you <laughs> i've got proof <laughs> Check our own place. <laughs> yeah, they didn't say related joke. <laughs> yeah.